you're doing uh, uh, stuff related, or if you're even preparing for your quizzes, uh, you should be able to do that. Okay, so we we'll continue. Uh, so just a brief recap. Uh, we started with the assumptions on the workloads, and then we proceeded with the different algorithms or policies. Uh, basically, we are trying to uh, meet certain certain metrics like uh, performance, response times, uh, and turnaround time, and sometimes fairness. Right. So, uh, one of the interesting part last time, the last part is basically about incorporating I/O because the original uh, scheduling algorithms only consider CPU burst. Right. We said that most processes actually they alternate between CPU and I/O operation. Now, if this process is doing an I/O, you allow it to wait. Then this time here, the CPU is doing nothing. So why not put a process there? And then when the I/O completes, then resume the process A. Okay. So basically, this maximizes CPU utilization. And in COMSAI 132, this is somehow uh, related to the concept of pipelining. Okay? So there are, other, uh, there are other algorithms, I think, uh, uh, in chapter 9. So sh uh, proportional share. Okay? So here, uh, the in the previous chapter, the criteria or the metrics are turn or average turnaround time and the response time uh, and maxim CPU maximization, right? the use of C maximizing the use of the CPU. Okay? So sometimes you also want to have a fair scheduler, right? a fair scheduler. So what do you do that? Okay? So you have a fair share scheduler. Okay. Uh, the idea is to guarantee that each job obtain a certain percentage of CPU time, right? And it is not optimized for turnaround or response times. Because, for example, if you have a multi-user operating system, for example, in this system, how many users are we here? So type W, you can see here that currently there are two users logged in, ordinary users, user, and me, right? So uh, the Linux operating system, for example, would like to implement fair scheduling. Our, uh, for example, if only have one core here, then user should be able, user user should be able to run processes, and then Jack will should be able to run processes in a fair manner. Let's say certain number of processes to be run, right? So this is the idea of fairness, right? So it's not optimized for turnaround time or response time, right? So, uh, one way to do this is, uh, is actually called lottery scheduling, okay? Lottery wherein you are given tickets, okay? And the tickets represent the share of a resource that a process should receive, okay? So you're, uh, each process will be given uh, tickets and the percent of tickets represents its share of the system resource in question. So, there's something, some, something like economics, okay? some application of economics, right? So the basic idea is you have process having tickets. Now, for example, there are two processes A and B, okay? Process A has 75 tickets and process B has 25 tickets. Then, process A should receive 75% of the CPU and uh, process B should receive 25% of the CPU. So for example, as I, I've shown a while ago, user and Jack Harkosini are the two users in the system. If I am given 75 tickets, then I should be able to run processes uh, or should be, I should be able to use the CPU 70% of the time. Right? And whereas user should be able to run this, uh, use the CPU 25% of the time. Okay? So lottery scheduling is basically like that. So. Uh, so it has something to do with uh, it has something to do with uh, probabilistic. Right? So you have a random number generator. You, for example, I have a set of tickets. Jack Hermosilla and user has 25% uh, and uh, 25 tickets and may mga numbers yon. Uh, let's say kung ano man yung numbers na yon. And then the scheduler will draw a random number and 
if that number is, I hold that number okay, is part of my I, I own that ticket number then I will be given access to the CPU okay? so that's the idea and the winning process since ako yung merong hawak ng lottery number na yun, then I will use the CPU so example there are 100 tickets for say has 75 tickets and the numbers are 0 to 74 and process B for example Jack Hermosillo ito, ito yung user so ito yung uh, mga, draw, uh, mga draws okay? Noto, okay? 63 sino may hawak ng 63 process A okay? you get the CPU. Then, another time, you draw another number, 85. Sino may hawak ng 85? Parts B. Okay, so, this is the idea. Okay. And, uh, in, during short runs, it's not easily evident that uh, the percentage desired will be achieved. But, in the long run, eventually, the percentage will be achieved. The fairness objective will actually be achieved. Okay? The longer these two gems complete, the more likely they are to achieve the desired uh, percentages. So remember, no, uh, you have you. Eto pending user or pending process. Kasi bawat process na ina na create usually is associated to a user, di ba? So yung you uh, if you look at PS for example. Probably there are no running processes for user, but uh, so what, what I'm showing here is that yeah, this one. So what I'm showing here is that user 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 has his own set of processes. Well. I have my own set of processes. So the lottery scheduling doesn't mean that uh, doesn't mean that uh, is specific to a process. It can be a specific user which spawns or uh, creates a lot of processes. Okay, That's just what, what I'm saying. Okay. So how do in, how how do you implement uh, some mechanisms or uh, some specific details on how to implement this ticket uh, ticketing mechanism? Okay. So, uh, something like an economy, so you have a currency. Okay? So you have a certain uh, a currency, so you have ticket currency. Uh, a user allocates tickets among their own jobs in whatever currency they would like. Okay? And uh, the system converts the currency into, a, uh, into the correct uh, global value. Let's say uh, dollars. Dollars is the global uh, correct global value, okay? the global currency, and then uh, each process or each user will allocate, uh, let's say, Philippine peso okay, for the tickets, and then it's the system that converts that to dollars, something like that. Okay? So if there are 200 tickets for the global currency, process A has 100 tickets, process B has 100 tickets, okay? And user A, okay, uh, 500 is the peso, for example. So this is the peso currency, right? So it will be converted into the dollar currency, right? So you get the idea uh, of this mechanism, okay? So it's the ticket, okay? So pipressuhan niya, nung ano? Pipressuhan nung, uh, nung uh, user yung uh, base currency niya yung ticket, okay? And ticket transfer okay so may ticket ako si process A pero yung ibigay si process B uh, uh limba na cancel yung ano di may, may mga bibili ng mga concert di ba tapos or may mga reservations okay so ayan ah di mga katen may lakad ako sa 14 okay so sayo na yan speed dating ticket sa mga like that so that's uh, another way and the next one is ticket inflation Okay, so, again, economics, okay? well, economy, so you think of the system as an economy and uh, you have possible inflation of the tickets, right? Process can temporarily raise or lower the number of tickets as own, and if anyone process this more CPU time, it can boost these tickets. Like China, for example, so if you want to uh, increase the 
uh, somehow the economy okay? so kasan mo yung value ng ano ba currency ng China Chinese dollars yuan yuan okay? so uh, here's a possible implementation of lottery scheduling okay? so you basically just have uh, you just keep a list of process in a list by okay, job A, how many tickets? 100. Job B, how many tickets? 50. Job C, how many tickets? 250. It's a linked list. Okay? And then you simply, this is how you implement that. Okay? Uh, so you have a counter and then the winner will uh, get a random number from zero to the number total number of tickets. Okay? And then the, uh, traverse, basically traverse the list. Okay? Are you, is this code familiar to you? Huh? Or kung hindi pa, kailangan nyo dumalik kayo sa area. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, this is basically uh, this reversal. Okay. So, if you have a certain way of saying, how do we have? Right? So, uh, list reversal. Right? So, we can also uh, define an unfairness metric okay, when you implement the scheduling. So, the time the first job completes divided by the time that the second job completes. So, ang goal mo dito actually is uh, to make this uh, one. Okay? You will be close to one when both jobs finish at nearly the same time. Okay? So, you can define this unfair. You can, so, given those uh, values, okay? so you can define this uh, unfairness metric. And uh, this one here is... Uh, a simple simulation given those parameters okay so in the long run okay in the long run okay if the job length are long eventually fair your uh metric you have your average turn around time and your response time then we can have this uh u unfairness metrics okay? Job, first job finish at time 10, second job finish at time 20. Okay. And in the long run, if you have long jobs, eventually they will have this. Okay. And as you can see, okay, when the job length is not very long, okay, the unfairness is quite, uh, quite severe. Okay? Is that clear? So, the lottery scheduling is uh, probabilistic. Why probabilistic? Because it's based on chance, based on the output of the random number generator. Okay? Remember the code here? Okay? So this one, this is uses a random number generator to get the winner. Okay? So why not just, if you want to be fair, bakit kailangan mo mag-draw lots? Okay? Bakit hindi na lang mag-set ka ng specified na a certain amount of time para yun talaga yung gusto niya di ano ko siya kanya i-allocate sa kanya okay? so this is called uh, stride scheduling so kung yung lottery scheduling ay probabilistic itong stride scheduling is deterministic okay so walang ano walang involved na ano walang involved na draw lots okay so ano yung sistema dito okay so the idea is to choose a large number and meron pa rin ticket. Okay? Meron pa rin siyang ticket pero wala ka nang ano, wala nang draw lots. Okay? So you have a large number of a large number and large number and then you divide that with the number of tickets for that particular process. For example, if you have if you say this large number is 10,000, okay? And let's say A has 100 tickets, you define the stride of A as 100 because one, 10,000 divided by 100 I think is 1,000, okay? And process B, let's say, has 50 uh, tickets, 10,000 divided by 50, then the stride of B is 200. So, the large number may be arbitrary, lead chosen, okay? And how does this work? A process runs, okay? So, meaning it, uh, it is allocated, uh, it is placed in the CPU for execution, uh, it increments a counter, it's called the pass value, okay? For, for it by its stride. So after running, so this is the algorithm. I think it's better to use the, the algorithm. Okay? So you have a list of uh, processes, okay? And uh, the, uh, if we look at this uh, linked list, right? 
Okay? So, job A, job B, job C. Okay? Let's compute the stride. Okay? The stride is some large number divided by the number of tickets. So, 10,000 divided by 100, 10,000 divided by 50, 10,000 divided by 250. That will be your stride. Okay? And then, you also identify another variable called the pass value. So in addition to stride, you also need to have this pass value. So initially, zero sila lahat. Yung pass value nila, let's say ABC, their pass value is uh, initially set to zero. Okay? And then, you have this code. So parent, remove the mean Q. Uh, 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 have you used priority queues, implemented priority queues in 1, 2, 3? Anong implementation na ginamit nyo? Heap, di ba? Di ba? Tama ba yung heap? Are you familiar with the heap? Okay. So, if you have the heap, yung priority number niya is nothing more. Yung priority number niya, nandun sa, sa taas, di ba? That's the, ano, the priority queue. Uh, the heap and the uh, so dito, in addition to each, meron kang additional field like stride, tapos yung pass. May tatlong fields. And then zero na halang yung pass. So kung pare-pareho yung ano, kung, kung trinit mo siya as heap, okay? so pwede arbitrarily, if it's initially pareho lahat yung, yung pass value nila ay zero, let's say A. So A yung inerator na karen. And then si A mag-run sa CPU. Okay? And then, Ang gagawin is, si A, siya yung current, diba? Si current points to A, yung pass value niya, sabi ko kanina, is another field, will be incremented by the stride. So, ano yung stride ni A? Ang stride ni A is 100. So, 0 plus 100, that will be the new pass value of, uh, that will be the new pass value of A. Okay? And, remember na yung priority number, will be the pass value. The lower, the smaller the pass value, okay, the higher the priority. You get the idea? So, then you back? So, yeah, then you say it on. And then, insert back to the queue. Okay? Uh, that's basically the idea. And then, another loop. Okay? So, kapansin nyo dito, meron bang drawlas dito? Wala. Okay? Ang pinaka- Gamit na gamit ko na data structure dito is the priority queue. Where in the priority number is the, anong, anong field yung priority na ginagamit? Is the, anong field? Yung pass. Oh, yung pass, yun yung priority number niya. So in a way, uh, stride scheduling is a form of priority scheduling. Okay? Pag sinabi priority scheduling, you have an associated priority for each process. In this example, it is the pass field okay, that represents the, uh, the priority. Okay? So here's an example. Ah, ito na pang example. Okay? So as you can see here, okay, so you have the stride and then initially set to zero, na si A, okay? Uh, tapos out of the, so next round, na si B, okay? Next round, na si C. You get the idea. And that's uh, what we mean by uh, proportional, uh, actually proportional sharing, siya, okay? So if you, uh, okay, so yeah, do you, do, 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 do you get this? Okay. So you A, right, and C, and then and then C. So it depends. So it depends on the number of tickets. So the number of tickets natin. Sino yung may pinakamadaming tickets dito? Tatlo. C. So, dapat, siya ang pinakamadaming chance na mag sa CPU. Na-achieve ba siya dito? Okay. So, nung si A. So, nung si B. So, yun yung essence ng fair share scheduling. Okay? Get the idea? Okay. Now, bakit, bakit, kung pwede naman pala to, Bakit kailangan pa nung lottery scheduling na merong draw lots? Okay. Why do you still need that? Okay. Because of this. If you use stride scheduling, if a new job enters with a pass value of zero, 
siya yung nakakapag-monopolize, di ba? Kasi nagrara na yung system, halimbawa, nagrara na yung system. Tapos biglang may dumating. Nandito na si A, B, C. Biglang dumating si D. Zero. Zero yung pass value niya initially, di ba? So ano mga nangyayari? Yung iba, mataas na yung kanilang pass value kasi nagsimula na sila eh. Kaya ang mga nangyayari, laging mapipili ngayon si D kasi nagsisimula pa lang siya eh. Get the idea? So that's the problem with this deterministic. And you have to maintain state. Ito yung state na minimaintain usually. You need to monitor the, the, the pass value. Whereas sa draw lots, basta hawak mo na yung ticket number, kung ikaw yung nabunot, you get the chance. Okay, yun tayo diya? So yun yung ibig sabihin ng study scheduling. Okay, are there questions about this uh, fair share scheduling? None? Great. So we move on to the next one, which is actually actually in in this chapter, sa chapter na to, kasama yung fair share scheduling. Merong discussion do ng uh, there's a discussion of the uh, CFS, com uh, completely fair scheduler, which is used by Linux. Okay. Pinapakita don yung actual uh, assignment na sa inyo yun. I mean uh, reading, pa pero kasama sa exam yun is how does Linux implement this uh, CFS, complete, completely fair scheduling, okay, which is actually a variant of uh, the fair scheduler discussed. Okay, so the next topic we're going to work, look into is multiprocessor scheduling. In the previous discussion, we only focus on having a single CPU, a single processor, okay, single core. Now, will there be issues if you have multiple cores? Gumawa ka ng Hello World program, C program, niran mo siya. Okay? And uh, kahit, kahit sabihin na natin na apat yung cores ng machine mo or 16 core pa yan, sa isang core lang mag-run yan. Okay? Unless may gawin ka na maggamit niya yung, or yung complex yung program mo na pwede niyang gamitin yung ibang core. So, you can always see that pag nag ano ka, pag nag tap ka and uh, you will see na may mga ibang parts diyan na hindi nagagamit. Okay, ibang courses. So, here you have four cores. Paano ini-schedule ng process ng schedule or ng Linux na oh, ito ang process ng CPU 3 or CPU 1. Ano yung mga complications na ganun? Kasi nowadays, most hardware have multiple cores. Okay? So, that's what we're going to look into. How does the uh, scheduler do that and of course kailangan yun ng recollection ng 131 lalo na yung sa nag, sa akin nag, nag 131 okay. so uh, just an introduction multiprocessor scheduling okay. the rise of multiple processors is the so, uh, is the source of multiprocessor scheduling proliferation right okay. so you have a single chip four cores okay and adding more CPUs does not make that single application run faster. Okay. Your hello world, uh, your sum, your your program that sums a number, uh, a large set of number, one to one million, okay, is a for loop. Okay, pag niran mo yan, kahit multiple cores yan, isang processor core pa rin yan. Unless split mo siya into threads actually, which we'll discuss later, okay. So, sa topic na kang currency, so pwede kayong gumamit. But you've been introduced to the concept of threads in Comsay 22, di ba? Okay, tama ba? Okay, so yun. How do you schedule jobs on multiple CPUs? Now, meron mga, ano, meron mga uh, details na nagko-complicate sa uh, CPU scheduling if you have multiple processors. The first one is caches. Okay, so it has something to do with the uh, architecture level, right? So you have the CPU, of course, you know that already you have the CPU, and you have the CPU processor, and you have the cache, which is part of the chip, and then you have uh, memory somewhere, and then you have the bus here, right? And basically that's the idea. So the cache has faster memory, etc. You know this already, okay? And most recently accessed data are placed in the cache instead of going to the memory. But in this example, you only have one CPU, right? However, 
if you have, as shown here, at least two cores, say dual core, uh, core to duo, mga ganun, di ba, yung sa, 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 sa Intel processor, there will be some problems, right? So, the problem is called, uh, the issue is called cache coherence, okay? So, the problem is, uh, the data may not be consistent among al among the caches, among the CPU ports. Right? So let's say you have CPU zero here, and it has his, its own L1 cache. Okay? So L1 cache is directly part of uh, on the chip, right? Very fast. Yes, L1 cache, and then they have to be connected to the memory. This is the main memory, so it's uh, slower faster and the program needs access to data, right? So remember when we talked about uh, so 131, yung direct map cache, right? You have the memory address and then you have the cache here, right? So, ano nangyayari dito, right? So, there might be some inconsistencies. Two CPUs with cache sharing memory, right? Next step, CPU 0 reads a data at address 1, Sabihin natin, and this one. So, siyempre, si CPU 0, chichek niyo yung cache niya. Nandito na ba si laman ng address 1? Wala pa. Okay. Direct map cache, for example. So, ilo-load niya yan from the main memory to this stuff here. Okay. So, this is CPU 0. Okay? So, remember, yung pinaka-backing store natin, or pinaka-content is yung main memory na, na nasa baba, okay? And then, ang ginawa ni CPU 0, binago niya yung value niya, no? binago niya yung value ni D, ginawa niya D prime, right? Now, in talking about caches, meron tayong tinatawag na uh, writing policy. Okay, meron na, nag-squad rin sa akin, Meron tayong tinawag na write back sa kayong write through, di ba? So, para ang idea is, binago ni CPU 0, pero since write back siya, halimbawa, yung policy ng hardware, is the common, hindi niya muna isusulat yan sa main memory. Nandun lang muna yan sa cache niya. Kasi, di ba sa cache, kung nalang sa 131, meron tayong cache line. Pag hindi mo pa i-replace yung cache line na yun, huwag mo muna siya ilalagay sa memory. Pero halimbawa, puno na yung cache mo, maghahanap ka na ng slot na paglalagyan, kailangan mo nang palitan yung cache line na yun, saka mo lang siya isusulat sa main memory. Okay? Naalala na yun sa 131. So, ang nangyari na yun, si CPU 1 man, kailangan niya rin yung D. So, since wala pa sa cache niya, Papasalin niya sa memory. So, ano nangyari? Magkaiba sila ng ginagamit. Si CPU-1, yung process sa CPU-1, ang ginagamit niya, yung old value ni D, tapos si CPU-0, ang ginagamit niya na ngayon, yung updated value na. You get the idea? Okay. The main reason kung bakit hindi ito na-update, kasi sa hardware, may optimization, na write back, na hanggang hindi mo pa i-replace yung cache line na yun, huwag mo muna siya isusulat sa main memory. Okay? So, how do you solve uh, cache, uh, cache coherence uh, problem? Okay? So, isang solution is yung tinatawag na bus snooping, okay? where in each, uh, each uh, core or each cache, okay? each cache will uh, try to check yung ano yung bus tapos ang gagawin niya pag nakita niya na binago yung sa kabila i-invalidate niya yung ano yung kopya niya para mag-fetch ng bagong value okay so ito yon yung bus is looping itong cache na to sa hardware level to no may circuitry na gagawin check niya oy Binago ni CPU yung ano, yung uh, laman niya. Okay. Pwede, babaguhin niya rin yung laman niya. Kasi na-sense, ito yung bus na sinasabi, shared bus. Nag-i-snoop siya, 
dun sa ibang lines. However, merong additional na overhead yan, di ba? Sa pag-maintenance. But that's one way to, to, save, to solve this problem. Okay, yun tayo niya? O, oh, halimbawa, eto, niload siya dito. Tapos, si CPU may ginawa na naman sa D. Nandito na to. Okay? Remember, memory, may memory, may record siya ng, uh, the way you implement cache sa 131 is yung memory address divided into separate fields. Okay? And then, syempre, alam niyo yung memory address, 1 yan. Ito, 1 din. So, bus snooping would be, okay, lahat ng nag-access sa memory area, sa memory 1, na connected dito sa dito sa line na to, malalaman dapat niya. So, pag may binato yan, update niya yan. D-prime na rin siya. Okay? You get the idea? So, yun yung bus is looping. Okay? So, that's one issue that must be addressed with when implementing uh, a multiprocessor scheduler. Okay? <clears throat> now, another issue might be uh, synchronization. Actually, this is a topic in concurrency. Okay? Uh, when accessing shared data across CPUs, uh, mutual exclusion primitives should likely be used to guarantee correctness. Uh, kung nagbago sa kayo ng Java API or uh, any library, meron, kayong na, meron ba kayo na nakikita ang mga thread safe, mga ganon, na, na requirement, thread safe? Diba, vector is a thread, thread safe collection uh, something, okay? while, while link list is not thread safe. Okay? Sa Java. Okay? Ito yun. Okay? So, this one is an example of uh, a problem if you have multiple CPUs and the processes running on uh, the dif on different cores, they access the, shape, the same uh, data. Okay? This is an example. Again, okay? Comsai 1, 2, 3. Of course, do you, do you understand this code? No declaration. If you don't understand this code, you can go back to Comsai 1, 2, 3, offer the end of the code. You can sit in and understand the English. So type extract, the tag name, and then the field, and then it's a pointer to the next element. Okay. And this is an implementation of, anong, ano to? anong delete ano to? Delete from ano to? Delete from? Delete from head. Okay, so it's spam. Right? So what it does is to assign the head to the temporary, uh, temporary pointer and then store the value because that will be the value will be returned and then you point head to head banks and then free them. Okay? So imagine, imagine that if this code is being executed uh, at the, at the different, uh, in different cores. Okay? So so, nandito yung weak list, nandito sa memory, si CPU1 binagalaw niya yun, si, si CPU0 binagalaw niya yun, si CPU1 binagalaw niya yun. And they may be, they may be, halimbawa, uh, ang, mangy, ang pwede mangyari kasi dyan is, itong part na to, ina-execute ni CPU0. Tapos, nandito na ngayon si CPU0, tapos, ito naman yung ina-execute ni CPU1. So, nilakaroon ng, con ng conflict, di ba? Kasi, kung wala kang running, uh, wala kang locking mechanism, sabay nilang pwede i-access to code fragment na to. Right? So, a solution is basically to introduce yung locking mechanism. So, as you can see here, in most operating system kernel, you're going to see lock and unlock Ah, uh, operating system kernel data structures, data structure access, meron lang yung lock and lock na dyan. So, meron mo lock, tapos and lock. So, ibig sabihin, si CP, yung process na ng CP, na yung program na to, kung nag-run ito sa CPU 0, hihintay na mo, hihintay niya na makakuha siya ng lock. Pag nakakuha siya ng lock, saka niya lang gagawin lahat to, and then i-release niya. So, kailangan ito atomic dapat. Habang may isang process na nag-execute sa code fragment na to, dapat walang ibang process na mag-execute sa code fragment na to. Okay? Yung ibig sabihin ng lahat. Okay? That is basically for synchronization. Okay? That clear? Okay. 
So the next one is uh, cash affinity. Okay. Pinakita ko na sa inyo last time no kung paano mo malalaman kung sa anong CPU number nagran yung process, di ba? Kung si Firefox halimbawa nagran sa zero as uh, nag-iiba-iba siya, di ba? Kung saan core nagran, okay? So yung idea ng cash affinity is as much as possible you can actually uh, force a process to run on a specific core. Bakit mo gugustuhin na sa isang specific core lang magraran yung isang process, okay? The port basically is because of cache affinity, okay? A process builds up a fair bit of state in the cache. Pag nag uh, pag na, uh, I think you can recall dito yung ano dito? Uh, yung locality. Have you have this remember locality? Meron tayong temporal locality and uh, spatial locality, okay? Kung si process, kung si process, let's say, the lower process, nagdaran dito, merong special locality yan. Na usually, yung mga data na ginagamit niya, habang nagdaran siya, ay malalagay na dito sa cash. Okay? Malalagay na sa cash. Ngayon, pag, uh, pag nilipat ko siya bigla, dito, yung lower mo, habang nag-execute siya, pinos ko siya, nilipat ko siya dito, kailangan nyo na naman i-repopulate yung cash niya. Okay? So, ang mangyayari ngayon is, well, that will be a performance uh, issue. Okay? So, the next time the process run, it will run faster if some of its state is already present in the cache on that CPU. So, halimbawa, yung si Hello Worlds, nag-terminate na siya, malaki yung L1 cache mo. Okay? So, malamang, yung mga pag niran mo uli siya, mas mabilis na siya mag-start up. Okay? Nakuha niyo yung idea na yun? So, so a multiprocessor scheduler should consider cache affinity when making its scheduling decision. Okay? So, how do we implement now? How do we implement this uh, uh, multiprocessor scheduler? The main requirement, of course, is we have multiple cores and each core has its own uh, L1 cache. Basically, na directly linked to that core. So the first one approach, the first approach to do that is to maintain a single process queue for everything. Okay? So it's called single queue multiprocessor scheduling. Put all jobs that need to be scheduled in a single queue, isa lang, and then each CPU simply picks the next job from the globally shared queue. Okay? So globally shared queue. Ano yung uh, advantages? Uh, yung advantage niya is it's very simple. Meron kang kernel, meron kang uh, ready queue processes, isang link list lang yun, okay? And then, dito, may mili ka lang basically, okay? So, the problem is, some form of nothing have to be inserted, okay? So, kailangan, di ba, link list to, okay? So, nakakaproblema kung wala kang laking mechanism na gagawin dyan, okay? Cash affinity, okay? And, uh, That's the problem also with uh, cache affinity. Okay. So, for example, let's have this uh, uh, Q, okay? How many processes, five processes, and how many cores? You have uh, four cores, right? And this, will, this might be a possible uh, uh, schedule. So A, A, B, C, D, D, A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D. So, ano yung mangyayari pag ganyan? Okay. So, yung cache affinity will be a problem. Kasi, si A, halimbawa, nandito siya. Tapos, nalipat mo na naman siya dito. Okay. So, hindi kailangan i-refresh mo na naman yung cache niya. Okay. Get the idea? Okay. So, that's one problem. But, the main concept here is, uh, you only maintain a single view. Kaya na ito single view. And uh, lack of scale, uh, basically yung lack of okay? So, mahihirapan ka ngayon na uh, pag-add. Pag nag-add ka ng additional course, okay? pag nag-add ka ng uh, scaling would be, ang idea ng scaling is if you add additional course, somehow your, your performance should also improve. Okay? So, but if you add more course here, you're, you're going to need additional lacking mechanism. 
Because marami na sawa. Sa ngayon, apat lang yung nag-access nito. Paano kung, halimbawa, 64 na? So, 64 na yung mag-aagawa nito. Diba? Kung 64 na yung mag-aagawa nito, ang hirap nun. Diba? Kasi isang Q lang. You get the idea of scalability? Okay. So, ayan. And the last two, ah, okay. So, so cash affinity, ah, uh, pwede rin naman, pwede kang mag-introduce ng cash affinity. Okay. Kung saan, yun, halimbawa, si, pwede mong i-force na si, uh, si B ay dito lang sa CP1 magkakad. Sa Linux, meron kuman, ah, uh, meron kuman na tinatawag na task set. Na kung saan pwede mong ipin yung isang process sa isang CPU core lang. So, to, uh, para, alam nyo, para may pakita sa inyo, sa zero, uh, sana ba yun? Dito ba? Ito, ito. Okay. So, this one here, this will allow me to uh, pin the uh, Chrome process to run on okay. So, Chrome should be pinned to a process. So, if we uh, Ano bang process name ng Chrome? C-H-R-O-M-E Okay So, what do you see? Pinin natin yung Chrome process sa Core 2 Nagbabago ba siya? Hindi So, that's the idea And when you do that, okay uh, The scheduler will uh, will be somehow That's that, what's just one idea of uh, uh, doing that Okay? So, the last uh, I think topic here is okay, uh, stop, uh, we'll stop ito. Introduce ko lang ito yung multi-Q okay? So, the idea of uh, multi-Q is you have a Q for each core okay? That's the idea So, each, uh, each Q will follow a particular scheduling discipline and uh, when a job enters the system it is placed on exactly one scheduling Q and uh, it avoids the problem of information sharing and synchronization. Okay. However, so, sabi, ito. Okay, so pagpasok nila, meron ng specific assignment. And this is the queue for CPU 0, queue for CPU 1, and dun lang sila maglalaro dun sa, ano, sa kung saan sila naka-assign. So you have two queues here, multi, multi, uh, multiple queue. Okay? And it provides a scalability. If you need more, if you add more processors, you get more queues, right? So more scalable and cache affinity. Dun lang sila naglalaro dun sa uh, core, right? Okay? Pero ang problem jan is load imbalance, which we will discuss later. Okay? Pag marami queue, may mga ibang core na walang ginagawa. And how do you uh, assign us to? Okay? So we'll stop here and uh, yeah, please pass your paper for the quiz and uh, we'll continue. Uh,